Hey guys and welcome to today's video where I wanted to do an update on Diego's tank. Now the only thing I have done is taken out his water bowl because I was just about to clean it and then I thought you know what let's do an update. I looked back at my files when I filmed the bioactive one when I planted this tank and that was seven months ago and I'll be honest with you I didn't know how well some of these plants would grow. So when we first started off, we had this carex grass in the back. Now I will say when I put it in, it was very green. It now looks a bit yellow. So generally this is the cooler shady side. Over there is the hot bright side. We have UV and the LED bar over here and the heater. Um, at first I thought this appeared yellow because the tank is very yellow because of the background but I mean you can't deny looking at the first picture then this this does um, doesn't look too good so although I'm going to keep it in here because you know I'm kind of feeling its vibe I don't think it's grown much I did cut it down a bit and it hasn't really grown much it could be dead um, I did want to try something else so the other day when I was getting air plants for my room I found this guy and he's pretty big and he kind of resembles carex grass and the good thing about air plants is they don't need to be planted in soil. You can mount them on a bit of cork or you know wedge it in between rocks, it should do well. Now this type I believe does good in moderate light, I'm going to put it in the shady area for now but if I think it needs more I can easily move it. And it's as simple as that with the air plants, they just plop in and do quite well. One thing I have found, because I did try to use this in a Crested Gecko tank once, they don't do well with being sprayed that often and sometimes you'll find in vivariums and stuff the airflow isn't the best and so air plants don't do too well. But this one has a lot of ventilation if we turn up a piece, see some wires in the roof, but um, it generally is quite a good tank in terms of ventilation so we'll see how that one does. The other plant we started off with was this succulent. I didn't know how it was going to do and though it does have some watermarks on it and it looks a little bit darker than it was when it first came in. It has actually been growing so that's quite good and generally I water this tank every other day um, and it still looks quite dry and people worry about you know a bit of water for the leopard geckos but once again the ventilation in this tank is so good that it's not an issue. Now I did plant in this succulent and it actually produced three pups. So the first one is this little one which I'm going to repot because I accidentally nabbed it out last night. And we're going to try to remove these two big ones. This succulent's been doing so well I don't want to do anything to sort of ruin that. Okay just like that we have one that has like <laughs> one little root. I'm going to take off some of these leaves. I have actually got two pots with earth mix aridin. Technically I could pot these back in Diego's tank but I don't really know what I want to put them straight away and I kind of want to keep an eye on them. So we're going to pot them in a separate pot. Oh my god as I started pulling this uh, pup out a load of wood lice came running out so maybe they've been living amongst the succulent. That's cool to see. Oh this is a big pup. Um, I, I'm not very experienced with succulents, and I'm really sorry if anyone's triggered by this. Um, but we're going to repot this one. But it does seem like, weirdly enough, on the sunny, hot side is where the wood lice have decided this is where they want to live. It does look like I need to repot this succulent, though. So what I'm going to do now is give these a little water and I'm going to put them under this little lighting thing I have for plants that I got from Ikea years ago and see how they do and I'm going to come back and we're going to look at how they've done, if I can repot them in the tank and also how the air plant is doing. Hey Diego, come here. You're not falling for it. You know it's not a cricket. <laughs> so it's actually been about five and a half weeks since I last filmed and some things have happened in his tank. Now I'm keeping the main light off at the moment so he will hang out. Sometimes he gets a little bit scared and he'll go off. Um, but basically I moved these cork barks to make two individual hides originally it was like a tunnel round uh, he can still come round that but I just thought why not have loads of different hides uh, one thing you can definitely tell already is that carex grass is not doing well and I'm gonna pull that out today where is he going just opened the other door so um 
Not quite sure what he's up to. You alright, Diego? He's just, he's just curious. He's like, what are you doing? Do I go or am I okay? I think he's gonna shed actually, he looks a bit white. Okay, so basically. I feel like we don't see Diego as much on video, so I figured you might enjoy this. So basically, this is looking incredibly yellow, whereas the air plant is actually looking really healthy. It actually looks like it's got some new growth on it. So um, I'm gonna pull this out. As you can see, there hasn't been much root development. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's how long they were when I put them in. And just by listening to it, very crispy. Um, so I'm pretty sure this has died long ago. Um, the other thing I've found with like grass is I've chopped this up and put this back in Diego's tank. I've chopped parts of it up and put in my Crested Gecko and Chihua tank. And the isopods just don't seem to break up. Maybe it's just really tough to break up. I'll probably put it in our compost heap, to be honest with you. You know, let it just recycle. But um, that's definitely leaving the tank. As for the air plant, it actually looks really good. And you know air plants are like... They tend to be quite slow growing. You don't see them really bloom. I've, I've had it happen before and it's really nice, but it can be a bit of a rarity. Well, in the center of this, there's something new growing and it looks thicker, it looks different. And I'm like, is this a plant? Um, is this the actual flower? Is it gonna bloom or is this just new growth? Um, so that's very exciting. And this has actually done so well. It's kept its color, it's nice and green. And so I think this is something we could probably add more of in the tank. The other thing you sort of worry about with air plants is whether they're rotting. And the bottom of this does look dark, but I've had air plants that rot and it does not feel like that. It doesn't feel like it's easily gonna break or it's gone mushy, it actually feels really good. So if you're thinking of using air plants, I think I'm gonna use some more. It might be a good idea. Now I have just switched on Diego's light. Just so we can uh, put this plant back in. Now, as I said, the good thing about air plants is you can pop them anywhere. If I wanted this high up in the tank, I could. If I wanted it low down, obviously it'd be too, it's too tall to be high up. But say you've got a smaller air plant and you thought the background's looking a bit boring, oh, I'll pop one up there. That is the beauty of having an air plant. Um, you don't really want to plant them in the soil so i might try to lift that up maybe put some slate under it you know what you could literally hot glue gun some slate it to the slate if you wanted to um so uh, that you can work with air plants doing a whole range of things and i actually think if this continues to do well i might introduce more because i'm quite lucky that my local garden center sells a range of them from big to small and they're all about 2.99 they're really not expensive and of course they can produce pups so you take a pup off and you have another plant. So definitely one to try for leopard geckos if you're struggling with plants. Um, and also you probably don't need a drainage layer so much with these, but do remember to have a growth light. And in terms of watering, what I've been doing is when I give him fresh water and I water the other plants, I, I would say maybe once a week, give this a little mist. And obviously it just dries, it doesn't get soaked, and it seems to be doing well. Now, when it comes to the succulent, the actual main plant has been doing well. I was a little worried because obviously I did kind of dig it up a little bit to take those pups up, but since then it's been doing well. As for the pups themselves, they're doing well. Um, obviously succulents can take a while to grow. When these first came out, the leaves were a little more squidgy, a little more delicate. This one's got a lot better. There are actually two little ones in here. Um, this one's doing okay. This one... Mm, it's, it's quite small to begin with um but this is one of the beauties of having a bioactive tank you can propagate a plant you can sometimes they produce pups you take them out and you have more plants so if you've got a system that's working it can be very beneficial and you can save some money i don't know if i'll pop these in diego's tank right now i think they would do fine uh, but i want to just keep an eye on them water them keep them under a growth light to be honest the growth lights from ikea i don't know how good it is um but it's maintaining them at the moment um and then eventually they will move into diego's tank or even one of the other leopard gecko tanks when i set up their bioactive tanks so i hope this has kind of helped i know in comparison to sort of 
arboreal bioactive tanks. There isn't tons of information about arid environments. However, I feel the more people are doing it, the more we're discovering. I know there's a few really good Facebook pages which I'll link below if you wanna get some more information. I know I've learned a lot from them. And also because I was trying out air plants, I thought, you know what, this works for me. Uh, maybe I can help <laughs> spread some of that information because I think we need more and more examples and we can all sort of learn together. Um, I will also leave some video links below, so save plants for leopard geckos, and recently I got clown isopods, which could potentially be very good cleanup crew members for this tank. However, I must admit, I am still seeing the grey wood lice and the giant orange wood lice in here, and also Diego has a Morio worm beetle who lives in here, and I often see it near his poop. So, oh, that's another thing. They are eating the poop, you'll be glad to know, clean up crew are doing that but of course as everyone mentioned to me the white part of the poop does get left behind so that is something I need to clean out um but everything else gets taken away so that's handy anyway I'll leave you with that image and um yeah thank you for watching guys and goodbye <laughs>